would you would you mind if we start that a little bit? Because it was kind of it was muffled a little bit. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, great. So, hey everybody, my name is Exhibit, uh, and we are here today on another episode of Exhibit and Friends. Uh, the friend I have today is the legendary hip hop artist, uh, underground hip hop artist. But you should know who this man is. He goes by the name of Charlie Tuna, and he is. <laughs> A staple piece, but for the sake of you know, so we don't have to open up a book or read a Wikipedia article. Uh, Charlie, can you go ahead and tell everybody who you are, what you do, where you're from? Yeah, uh, well, like I, like you said before, my name is Charlie Tuna, uh, Charles Stewart, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I'm from a crew called Jurassic Five. I've been around for the better part of about 25 years within this music scene. I was introduced to this whole hip hop scene through graffiti art because that's exact that's the real my love, like more than anything, mm-hmm. is uh visual artistry. Um but I'm part of uh like I said, the group Jurassic Five. I was a pivotal part in that. Uh pivotal part in uh in creating Ozo Motley. Um I do a lot of solo stuff. Um I shocked myself with some of these solo uh collaborations that, that happened <laughs> as well. You know what I'm saying? I've got a lot of, a lot of uh, publishing out there. I'm just happy to be able to still work after 25 years, man. Thank you for having me. It's yeah. peace for itself, man. It's impressive. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, something that I read up on that you didn't touch up on is that you're a one-time or also a barber. Is that is that correct? Yeah, man. That's crazy that you read that. <laughs> yeah, man. I, you know, it's, I still cut my own hair for the most part, man, but... Okay. Uh, I used to be uh, the guy who, you know, when we was in high school, mm-hmm. I'd be um, uh, the guy who would who would tap the the, uh, the basketball team or the football team. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They'd, be lined, they'd be lined up in front of my crib uh, <laughs> right before you know football and basketball games, and I would be, you know, I charge five dollars a cut. Five dollars a cut. Man, man. I was- <laughs> You know, what I'm saying, but yeah, for that five dollars a cut, man, that's that's a dream out here. Yeah, back in the day, though, man, I, you know, that was that, yeah. was, that was good money. I got and, you. Uh, you know, yeah, it was cool. It was like I didn't have to ask my my grandmother for any 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 uh, you know extra money. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Hustle, do my thing. Yeah, I'm a little hustle, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the same time, around the same time, you're also, uh, you know. Doing graffiti art as well. Right? Yeah, man, I'm running around trying to paint okay, on anything I could. Yeah. yeah. So, what would you know a typical experience be like? Would you just kind of break out at two in the morning or something and just? Well, well, my experience in Chicago was that it was like, you know, my grandmother worked um, usually like a like a like a, a ten to seven type of type of job. So she'd get us okay. up, you know what I mean, and we go to school and come back home, that'd be like a typical day for her. But for me on Sunday nights, I'd sneak out at about 2 in the morning with the fellas <laughs> and go to the yards and paint all night till about 6 and then try to sneak back in the same way I snuck out, you know what I'm saying, wow. and, 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 you know, have all my stuff ready for school so so there wouldn't be no problem. <laughs> so you had the whole, you had the schedule. Oh, I had it locked. I, had it locked. <laughs> I, had her, I thought I had her fooled, and then one day I got caught because uh, um, I was a lookout, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, I, I was able to make sure everybody got away, but I was the one that got caught that night. But I was a youngster, so it was like, you know, they just took me to the to the, to the the holding tank and waited for my grandmother to come get me. And she was like, what the hell are you doing? I, was like, I thought I saw you get in the bed, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, took one for the team. Yeah, took one for the team. Bro. <laughs> That's funny, though. Uh, well, what? <laughs> Let's jump back. I mean, I guess we're still in the tracks of hip hop. Let's, let's dive more so into the topic of hip hop music. Uh, okay. Previously, you said that you wanted to emulate your heroes when it comes to hip hop music. Uh, when it comes to your, you know, your craft in hip hop music. Mm-hmm. Um, so, which one would be more important to you personally? Is sticking to the roots of hip hop, and this means, you know, I guess the the culture of hip hop, where hip hop is raised, what it stands for, mm-hmm. or uh, the sound or improving the sound. Which one uh, would you say is you know? I don't say more important, but more I mean, yeah, you you could say more important. Just you know, in, 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 from a personal perspective, for me, you mm-hmm. know, I come, I'm, I'm I'm a guy that, that existed before hip hop existed. I'm a guy that mm-hmm. watched 
you know, I say this in a, a line, dirt hustle with a hurt muscle. I watched <laughs> hip hop escape from New York like Kurt Russell. I watched it. I saw it. I saw it being created. Mm-hmm. I saw it spread. I saw, you know what I'm saying? So, so I enjoyed being a part of the actual culture and, and that included the music. It, it, it wasn't okay. limited to the music. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So if, if hip hop was a body, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the music was just an arm, you know what I mean? And, uh, mm-hmm. and the other arms you had, you know what I'm saying? Arms and legs is uh, graffiti and break dancing and, you know what I'm saying? Beatboxing okay. and all these different things, you know what I'm saying? That, that came along with the actual culture, you know? Yeah. So I, I'm a advocate of the culture, not just the music. Now music, is a reflection of what's going on around you. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that we are are being subjected to what was going on around us for a long particular time. Like if you think about it, like the last popular aspect of hip hop was like the the dope dealer phase. Now it's the dope Mm -hmm. taking phase. So it's like the dope dealer (laughs) sold the the drugs to the the, the dope (laughs) phase. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of how it feels. You know what I mean? Sometimes for me, I'm like, dude, this is crazy. But... (laughs) You know, that's kind of how it feels. And so it's just that, that the, the arm, one of the arms got more popular than the rest of the body. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's Maybe true. that had a nice tattoo on it. And everybody's like, look, look at that <laughs> arm and not looking at the rest of the body, you know. I, so, I got you. The arm's been doing some bicep curls, there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, he buff now. Dude. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's so big. Uh, well, you mentioned, um, you know, Oh, your your generation was the generation that I guess sold our generation the drugs. Um, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you because you know if if you if you watch some of your videos or just interviews, uh, you can see that you know you smoke weed and you mention sometimes. I don't know if you still do, but that Who, me? I've never, dude. <laughs> 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 I'm talking about it. I'm just casual, but uh, <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> This is where right speed now. is legal. No, no, but uh, you know, but I, I, I'm not really talking about weed. Cause weed is weed. But have you seen any drug activity uh, back when you know? Back in the day when I was coming. Yeah. Of yeah, course. I mean, you know, yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I came up in the in the era of Nancy Reagan. You know, what I'm saying that she was mm-hmm. like, quote unquote, saying no to drugs while her husband and uh and uh, all of her daughters bringing that shit in the, in the country. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I came from that. That that era of of looking at you know cocaine and crack as being whack and it's been, you know I've, I've had family members and even been resorted at times to happen to push to a pr- perspective of, of of getting money any way I possibly can if you can understand what I'm saying you know what I mean mm-hmm. so yeah it's one of those things you know I'm I'm a father you know so I have okay. to take care of my my child but that being said you know I, I quickly realized I wasn't that dude and uh yeah. I've had f- uh, friends around me that that ha- that that were uh, addicted to different things and uh, and have fallen victim to whether it been you know uh, consuming the drug or actually mm-hmm. serving and getting caught. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and are still yeah. locked up in certain instances. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, man. I mean, when I was young, people were addicted to 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 like they called it syrup. You know what I'm saying, but now yeah. like that provincial thing or something. I tr- I tr- I'm I'm damn near 50 years old, so it's like a trip to to see that return. Mm-hmm. It, it puts a new spin to me on the the phrase that no, there's nothing new under the sun because I'm like, wow, it's like it really ain't. They just do new things to it, but it's the same <laughs> thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, dope. You know, all kind. Of, you know, mm-hmm. in my day, dudes were sniffing heroin, like powder and all that stuff. When I was coming up <laughs> as a kid, you know what I'm saying, seeing. Yeah. It, People really strung out on drugs, and now it's like meth and mm-hmm. things like that. So you know, what I'm saying it's, it's it's the same intensity, in my opinion, man. But it seems like the drugs are a lot more powerful and and a lot more addictive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's that's very true. I'm from you know I'm from Houston, and uh, there's a lot of well, I mean, syrup syrup has always been you know kind of a thing. Like ever since I got there, everybody's just talking about oh, you know what it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, now, I mean. Syrup almost has like a whole new meaning. Like Houston rappers really aren't even talking. Well, some are, but you know, like the oldies aren't even talking about it like that anymore. But like the new guys are. And it, what's crazy is that uh, you know now that we have like I guess the pressure of social media, the influences, uh, the influence of social media, um, kind of amplifies that. And I wanted to ask you, you know, with social media kind of being like a new thing, and with it kind of uh, amplifying 
anything that you know rappers see or what fans see and do. Uh, we'd say you know not if it has had a positive or negative effect, but you know all my homies around me and the pe- different people that I know have children at this particular eight you know level in life and mm-hmm. time period. You know that the things are being more and more you know thrusted in in, in a child's face quicker than you know for even adults to even to to even have a chance to absorb and understand how to how to you know deal with stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, It'd be putting the it'd be putting the child face quick in the mug, and kids are like, well, "Mommy, what's that?" And you're like, "Wait, what? Where'd you learn that?" You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You know what I mean? My father used to say, "Learn about who you are as a person, and you can compare any and everything else to you." And that's the way that you learn differences. I'm like, "Oh, okay, I, like I get it. I get yeah. it. Okay." You know, what? I think a lot of that, and we can, I guess, dive away from the topic, but I think a lot of that is, you know, all these kids have iPads now and iPhones. Oh man, so. Dude. And you know the internet's a scary place. Oh, uh, the internet! Three thousand on that. I, I come from, I come from the time of, of encyclopedias. You know what I'm saying? The in, yeah. internet has taken. You know, Google has become. You know, I mean, dare I say? You know what I'm saying? What somebody would think God is, and all you got to do is ask it a question, and then you'll get an answer. Mm-hmm. Yep. In a second, you see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like it's like it's one of those things where that alone scares me because mm-hmm. it, it it's supposed to be the highest form of technology, and <laughs> it's making people dumber. Like, you know, you can't remember, the, you can't remember your, 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 the phone numbers. I used to remember hundreds of phone numbers, man. Now I can't remember shit. You know what I mean? Things like that, man. Like, you have a black foot? Little, uh, little black foot? Man, I used to, you know what, what was crazy? I didn't have what? a black book. I had a, I used to, you know, so I'm, a, I'm an artist. Right? I used to paint, and, mm-hmm. you know, draw and stuff. So I used to yeah. go to the store and get poster boards to paint on. So, Okay. I had this poster board on my wall with every number that I needed. Wow. And because wow. I, and beca- and it wasn't like organized either. It was written in different colors and different pens and all that stuff. And because when I wrote that number on that poster board, I yeah. instantly was like, it was almost like I was writing it in my brain and I wouldn't forget it. Okay. That's Them crazy. was those days. Not How no many numbers? How many numbers are we talking about? Oh, shit. It was about 200 <laughs> numbers on there, man. Easy. 200 numbers. Dang. Okay. I, I, I see you. <laughs> I see you. There was a lot of numbers on there, man. I didn't say. Damn, bro. I, I, can't, I can't imagine having to just write that down. Like, having a store, you know, store numbers, a cell phone number. Like, that would drive me crazy. I, I wouldn't talk to anybody. But let's <laughs> let's move on to the next topic. Um, All right. Uh, the Adventures of Reluctant Superhero. Can you can you talk to us a little bit about what that is? Yeah. Okay. Now I got ten percent on my phone, so if it dies, okay, please forgive me. Okay. Right, Here well, we go. Cool. Reluctant Superhero is basically a, a concept that came from a couple of different flukes. A friend of mine, Mr. Crafty Cuts, who I, I completed this album with, uh, basically wanted to do a song with me for a long period of time because he had created a beat that he thought would sound dope. I think he wanted it to be for, for Jurassic at first. You know, I'm not exactly sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 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 he uh, was trying to get it to us, and for some for some reason, he couldn't get it to me, right? So finally, when I was doing stuff with with, uh, with the Funk Hunters, he saw uh, uh, his opportunity to get it, to get it to me. Okay. And so, oh, shit. Okay, I got to wait for this wind to stop blowing. Anyway... <laughs> I was trying to put some varnish on this painting that I'm finishing. But, uh, so he got the beat to me. I came out, I, he got the beat to me because uh, me and the, the Funk Cunners were on tour in England. We went to the studio to visit him. And when I was listening to the beat in the studio, I thought it was really dope. And I was like, damn, we should do something to it. He was like, let's do something to it now. I was like, all right, cool. So turn the beat on, you know what I'm saying? So roll one up, pulled out a piece of paper and a pen, walked around the studio for about a good hour and wrote, wrote, wrote the tune. And... You know, came up with, with the chorus and basically recorded it. That song is called Hands High. Now, Hands High uh, uh, was created after. Uh, no, no, we did Hands High, and then he wanted me to get on a song that he was about to put out with, with MC Dynamite called uh, It Ain't My Fault. So I was like, all right, cool. I get on that. We got on, I got on It Ain't My Fault, and then he released It Ain't My Fault as a single. It Ain't My Fault came out as a single and in 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 um in the song hands high i say 
when solo I'm a verbal assassin. I said, back with the miraculous Jurassic in classic fashion. But when solo, I'm a verbal assassin. The dude who was doing the art thought I said purple assassin. So he drew uh, characters that looked like superheroes. And I, he drew me looking like one of those Nacho Libre type of, you know, you know wrestlers, <laughs> what have you, on some purple stuff, right? Yeah. So needless to say, the song that I did with Dynamite and Crash, he got, got picked up by BBC Six Radio. And then they start playing it crazy. And I was like, damn, they're playing, re- they playing our record like crazy. So, um, so me and... Um, Crafty and Dynamite got a chance to perform on BBC Six, and when we were performing on BBC Six, we, I think it was a little bit before that we had the idea, we was like, man, let's just do a whole album, and let's just start recording stuff and see what happens. And uh, around that time, we were presented with the, with the cover to It Ain't My Fault and to Hands High, and it was like, you know, these superhero dudes, and I was like, you know what, the Purple Assassin, that's hilarious. I was like, you know what we should do? <laughs> we, should, we should do this whole album based on you know, being like a reluctant superhero, so to speak, because of the fact that all, hip, in my opinion, the way that I was introduced to hip hop was like reading comic books and hip hop, hip hop groups, and it was like a hundred groups when I came in. You know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, the Funky Four plus one more, the you know, Cold Crush Brothers, the Fantastic Five, the you know, what I'm saying the Treacherous Three. It was just mm-hmm. Run DMC. It was like all these magical, amazing names, and each yeah. one of them had their own style which you could attribute to their own power. So I was like, okay, what if you had all these different dudes that were actually powerful beings, but some of them didn't want to use their power for good, or some of them didn't want to use their power at all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was like, what if, what if the whole album was based around like an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting, and we were all, but we were, it, was, it was called Superheroes Anonymous, and we were all in this meeting basically getting our feelings out on what, you know why we would why we don't really want to be a superhero, so to speak, and that, you know, and, and that idea came okay. from watching the movie Hancock with, <laughs> with Will Smith. You know, what I'm I was like, this is the perfect opportunity to get this kind of thing out. So we started basing these songs on that idea, and you know, almost two years later, here we go. Okay, and what kind of a sound uh, can we expect on this album? Uh, hip hop, man, like for real, heavy hip-hop. bass, ba- boom bap, but like. Straight light, straight light. It can compete with that EDM shit, and I'm just glad because oh, okay. of the fact that you know Crafty and them have been living in that world for so long. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When, yeah. ma- when making those kind of songs, that his mind state is on that and in that world. You know what I mean? So okay, well, that's great. And we can look, uh, be on the lookout for the release on August 9th, right? Yep, August 9th. Yep, August 9th. All right, good. To get that in there. All right, well, let's just go ahead and wrap that up. Usually, we wrap it up with a uh, philosophical question, but I know that you are a Marvel and DC fan, so I'm going to ask you, if you can be any superhero, who would you be and why? <clears throat> wow. Um, if I could be any superhero. Uh, well, when I was a kid, man, I always loved Logan, man, uh, Wolverine. Right? Wolverine. I always loved him just because of, uh, you know, his healing factor, his I don't give a fuckness, you know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, All these yeah. different things about Wolverine, man, that I love, right? I okay. love this dude. Um, so I would I would have to say Logan, like, out the gate, but then you got to go to somebody like Batman. Like, Batman is like, you know, Wolverine like he said in the movie, man, he said, you know, his super <laughs> is rich, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the greatest tactician on earth. I mean, that's, that dude is, yeah. I mean, so, Batman is yeah. Batman is one of one. You know, like everybody exactly. wants to be Batman. Batman and Iron exactly. Man. But, but yeah, I, I'm cool on Iron Man though, because I, I I I don't think I'm that that arrogant. But it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> he still loved everybody, so. Okay, I like it. So you know, you got you got to have some humbleness still. You know. Yeah, exactly. That's how. Got to have some kind of humbleness too. Okay, I mean, yeah, I, I, I see that in Batman or in Batman and uh, in Wolverine, you know. At least yeah. compared to Iron Man, that's a damn show. Yeah, at least compared to Iron Man, for sure. Yeah. For All point. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, Charlie Tuna, I appreciate you being on this episode of Exhibit and Friends. Uh, and that's all we have for you today. I mean, unless oh, there's anything else you want to wanna um, add? Big up to everybody out there who supported us for X amount of years, man. I mean, I've been around for 25 of them, and if you heard about me within that 25, thank you. If you're just hearing about me now, thank you. If you 
supported me from those days and love any of my music right now. Thank you. If you just learn about any of my, any of my music right now, thank you. If you want to see some of this art, go to charlietuna.com, C-H-A-L-I-2-N-A dot com, and just check it all out. And y'all tell me what y'all like, if you want to buy some, if you want to see some more, whatever it is, I'll let your boy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. The man himself. I appreciate you taking the time. All right, man. Thanks a lot. All right, my Thank pleasure. You. All right, so I need to see the song up. All right, that's it.